Condemn me, it does not matter. History will absolve me. On Saturday, Fidel Castro, the man who changed history, died at the age of 90. Neither Britain's leader of the opposition, Jeremy Corbyn, nor Britain's Prime Minister, Theresa May, will join leaders from around the world for Sunday's funeral. Joining me now is Rob Miller, director of the Cuba Solidarity Campaign. Uh, Rob, what's behind the British media's demonization of Fidel Castro? Well, I think that demonization has been led by a US media and a US government that has really funded uh, an aggressive policy of blockade and a propaganda war that has tried to isolate Cuba. And the British media, as indeed much of the Western media, has really aped that media discourse, which has emanated out of Miami, where you have a million odd Cubans who have self-exiled themselves uh, from Cuba, who have led a propaganda uh, aggressive drive against Cuba, trying to isolate that uh, uh, country in an attempt at regime change. So I think the British media, as well as the Western media, needs to start to learn the lessons that Cuba is no threat. It's a normal country. It's purely a threat, perhaps, of a good example. But it's time that we embraced Cuba and shared and learned from each other in a way that uh, we should be dealing with all countries. And you, so men you mentioned the blockade. On the left, there's been a degree of uh, triangulation going on about the legacy of Fidel Castro. How dangerous is the continuing US threat against the revolution? It's incredibly Cuba. dangerous. I mean, right now? Right now. And the blockade continues right up to this present time. Um, international corporations have been fined billions of dollars over uh, the last 50 years. And in the two terms of Obama, uh, 49 international fines have been uh, passed on to international corporations, including British banks such as Lloyds, RBS, Barclays. And they've paid billions of dollars in fines purely for small trading uh, with Cuba over the years. Indeed, our own organisation, the Cuba Solidarity Campaign, we had all of our bank accounts closed in November last year as a direct result of the blockade. But everyone's heralding Obama as this great guy who's made peace with Cuba and there's no threat to Cuba from Washington anymore. Absolutely, but this was the co-op bank closing our bank accounts, so a British bank closing the accounts of an NGO in Britain because of the threat of these international fines. The blockade is still in place. It's the longest and most vicious blockade outside of wartime. Guantanamo Bay is still illegally occupied. And the United States still funds to the tune of $30 million every year anti-Cuban uh, programs in the United States and inside Cuba, all at an attempt to change the current regime on the island. Ironic that the mainstream obituaries talked about Castro sponsoring torture while the United States occupies part of Cuba to torture people? Absolutely. It's uh, one of the worst ironies. It's the, the land is illegally occupied. And then to add insult to injury, the United States operate a prison camp uh, on the island. And imagine how that is for the Cuban people whose land is occupied. They would like the Americans to leave, and they've made that abundantly clear. There were a lot of these ironies in the coverage of, of the death. What about identity politics and gay rights, which was in nearly every obituary? The irony that, of course, Britain supports Saudi Arabia and flew the flags at half-mast for uh, a Saudi leader that obviously mm -hmm. gay rights considerably worse in Saudi Arabia than Cuba. Well, possibly, that's, uh, you, you've, you've said that. But what I do know is that in the 60s and the 70s, there were issues about uh, LGBT representation and the treatment of LGBT communities in Cuba. But there were in every country at that time. Uh, but I would say this, that Cuba is leading uh, the change to that program, is now a leading light in supporting LGBT rights across uh, Cuba and in the region, in a region which I might add is a very uh, macho region where machismo runs through all those societies. Cuba is at the cutting edge. We ourselves brought Mariela Castro over to the UK a few years ago where she spoke in Trafalgar Square at the Gay Pride March, representing that new Cuba, that change of uh, a much more positive uh, relationship to the LGBT community. And in fact, gay, gay pride sponsored by the Cuban government when, when it comes to their version of it in Havana. The Idaho celebrations, yeah. Because the propaganda may not have worked as much, certainly in this country, perhaps to, due to organizations like yours, but it's by no means just Cuba. It's other countries in Latin America inspired by Fidel Castro. What's the level of propaganda we're hearing against governments that are seeking the kind of social justice programs of Castro? Countries are demonised. Nicaragua, for example, had elections at the beginning of November. Uh, about around 70% supported the Sandinista government. Yet immediately there were uh, statements coming out of the US that the elections were rigged, they were fraudulent, despite the fact that there were international observers there. In Venezuela, you've seen the numerous elections in uh, Venezuela, all perfectly legitimate, but they are seen, somehow uh, Venezuela is described as a dictatorship. It is a nonsense. There have been more elections in Venezuela than I care to remember over the, the last 20 years. 
years. So countries are demonised, not because of their uh, democratic processes, which may be different uh, to the billionaire-led uh, processes we've seen in, in the United States. They're demonised because they are different to the United States and they don't necessarily prescribe to the United States view of how these countries uh, should operate in the US's backyard. Donald Trump, I think you were referring to there, said Castro was a brutal dictator. Xi Jinping said Fidel Castro will live forever. Vladimir Putin said he was an inspiration to other countries. Cold War back in force? Well, it's been an anachronistic Cold War and, frankly, stupid policy towards Cuba for over 50 years. And President Obama himself has said that the policy has left the United States isolated, not Cuba. And it's true, 191... And yet Obama keeps the blockade going. He does indeed, but he at least Obama's uh, talking a better talk. The, the trajectory is more positive and we welcome those changes. 191 countries voted against that blockade uh, in October and just the United States and Israel, on this occasion they abstained of the condemnation of their own blockade. So the blockade is still there, but uh, we, we want to see uh, that change and we hope that Donald Trump will realise that US business want to trade with Cuba, the Cubans want to trade with America, the Cuban people have no animosity whatsoever towards the United States citizens. And we're sure that uh, the new US administration, and we hope that despite their rhetoric at this time and during the presidential campaign, that they will see reason and want to keep moving forward with their close neighbour Cuba. I know with uh, Hugo Chavez, we had to physically go to an office in London to sign it. Uh, what's the Cuban Solidarity Campaign doing about condolences for Fidel Castro? Well, we've opened an online book of condolences at uh, cuba-solidarity.org.uk and already over 3,000 people in the last uh, 24 hours have gone online and signed that book of uh, condolences, including actors and MPs and trade union leaders. And we hope that people, if they want to, of course, will want to pay their respects in that way. Rob Miller, thank you. Thank you.